Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. Hi everybody. We have another episode of the Power of Women in Business talk show. And today we are at a special location. We are at the Women Economic Forum in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And it's the 8th of March today, National International Women's Day. And I have yet a very interesting and powerful businesswoman, Carmen Breveld. And I'm feeling very honored. It, it cost me quite some effort to interview you, uh, Carmen. So, but I'll introduce, to you, introduce you first. Carmen Breveld, she's the founder of Triple Talent. This is an organization for young, high potentials with an ethnical minority background. She is offering them trainee programs where inclusiveness and leadership are combined. In 2003, Carmen received the European Business Award from European Federation of Black Business Women for the most successful black businesswoman of the year. Carmen is also the president of Women Entrepreneurs Netherlands, which organizes trade missions, especially for female business owners to other countries in the world. Carmen is also the co-organizer of the enormous Win Trade Week in London, where businesswomen from all over the world gather during this week to do business together and to learn from each other. Carmen, welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I feel honored, like I already said, and I have uh, quite a lot of questions to you. I specifically would like to talk to you about your trade missions. But let's start. Yeah. Why are you so dedicated to organize so many things for business women? Because that's how I know you. Yeah. Now, since 2003, when I was awarded, um, I feel the pressure to do something in return for women, mm -hmm. especially women entrepreneurs since I was in a world that I have only to do with men. Um, I had founded another company for 22 years. I had this company called Team Care. It was a specialized agency for human resource directors, mm -hmm. recruitment and interim management. And I had only male customers. Mm -hmm. And I was awarded because I was doing so well in that business in combination with uh, other uh, non-executive positions that I had. Mm -hmm. For three, three years long I was the advisor for Princess Maxima who is now our current queen and the judges liked it that I combined my business also with social yep. uh, responsibility and I thought after I was awarded I have to do something in return for women, for women mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and since I'm a women ent woman entrepreneur myself and I joined the freshly founded uh, organization, federation of Dutch business women. And I joined them and I was the chairwoman of the political co committee mm -hmm. where we address um, legislation that is um, not working well for women in business or for business people in, in general. Mm -hmm. And I did very well and in 2010 they appointed me as the national chairwoman. Okay. This is how it began. Okay, but what do you love about helping women and connecting women? No, I like to, um, you know, I, I've learned a lot myself, being an entrepreneur myself for 23 years, building up a successful business, a seven-figure uh, revenue business, and I noticed that a lot of women, they wanted to know, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. Because originally I'm from Suriname, I live here for 39 years now in the Netherlands, Suriname is a former colony from the Netherlands, so I spoke Dutch my whole life. Um, a lot of women were approaching me, asking me, how did you do it? How did you do it? Because what I see is that, what I notice is that um, 
there are a lot of women who are doing well, but they don't like it to be a role model. So they don't like to participate in interviews, television, radio. Mm. They want to work, um, you know, undercover. I say it sometimes, <laughs> undercover. But I told them that there are women out there and children who need role models. Yep. So if we don't come out to share the knowledge and share our experience with them, uh, who else will they have to look up to? True. So I, I like it to share my experience. You know, I have made a lot of mistakes, of course. Yeah. Uh, when you're growing a business, uh, you hire people, employees. And I would love to share it with others so that they don't have to make the mistakes all over again. Yeah, and you know, I want to address another point. I think that's also a, a typical women business thing is that they, don't, they feel they don't have the time. They, they are constantly overwhelmed by everything they think they have to do and need to do that they see no time in serving yeah. others. Do you, do you agree? I agree and I recognize it with a lot of women that time management is yeah. uh, lacking. And I think it's a, it's a matter of priorities. Mm. If you don't set your priorities, other people will do that for you. Yeah. So I was, uh, to give you an example, uh, for six years I was a member of the general board of the biggest employers association in the Netherlands. There were 143 men and seven women in wow. that board and yeah. I was one of the seven women. During the six years, I had lunches with all the men mm -hmm. and the seven women or the six other women, they never had time to have lunch with me to discuss how we can work together. So in the six years, I met 143 men, I get to know them, we do business, all of them are representatives of a certain uh, sector. And um, it bothers me that the six women that were there, besides myself, didn't want to make time to get to know each other better. Yeah. So how we can uh, improve life for women if they don't have the time to share with each other? They have the time, but they don't. It's give not a priority. The time. It's yeah. not a priority for them. Yeah, exactly. Because you cannot. Uh, it doesn't make sense to tell me for six years long that you don't have time for no. six years long. No. Then you have, don't have the skills uh, for time management. Not true. I agree. So, uh, Carmen, you organize trade missions. Yes. Um, for those who don't know, it's that you... Oh, I'll, I'll let you explain. Why did you come up with the idea of starting a trade mission? And maybe, first of all, explain what a trade mission is. Okay, a trade mission is um, a, a, a mission... You go on a mission, it's like when you go on a holiday, but it's specifically for business connections. So, you go to increase your trade. You go to other markets to uh, bring your product to the markets, to other markets. Because most of the women, they trade locally, so they have a very small group of clients. If you want to extend your client uh, database, you have to go outside your comfort zone. You have to go uh, crossing borders. And um, I noticed that there were 950 uh, trade missions each year going from the Netherlands to other countries. And there were only men who are booking these trips. And I thought, this is strange. And we had a terrible economic crisis, of course, economical crisis since 2008. And I saw a lot of businesses collapsing and bankrupt. Um, and I thought, OK, we can sit down and wait till all the businesses are gone. Or are we going to take action and mm -hmm. go abroad and to see how we can do business with other countries who are not suffering from uh, economic crisis? So this is how it started in 2014 and it helped a little bit because I was invited by a Moroccan business lady uh, to Morocco. That was my first trip in uh, March 2014 and it was a trade mission that was organized by the Moroccan princess. She invited all African and European and Middle East uh, leaders of women networks to Morocco, Tetuan, at the beach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she rented a whole hotel only for her guests. Mm -hmm. And this was my first time, no, not really my first time, but I went on trade missions before, but this was the first time that it was a real women trade mission with over more than 300 women together. Wow. Yeah. And I saw the impact that it can create in women's lives and in their businesses because we have people from all kinds of you know, small, medium size and also large enterprises. But also the shaikas and princesses, you know, everybody was there. 
and uh, there were several speeches because it was a four-day conference so it was a lot of speeches mm -hmm. and I was one of the last speakers because they start at South Africa moving up with the countries and then the Middle yeah. East yeah. and you know the Netherlands and the Nordics yeah. are yeah. on top so I was one of the last speakers and then something happened when I spoke because all these days we were listening to all the countries, everybody was sharing the figures, how bad it is, how bad the situation is for women. And I told them, I'm going to share a new figure with you, because there was a research recently, then in 2014, from the, uh, what is the company name again, from Maggie Berry? Uh, we Connect. We Connect International, they did a research on business for women, and they found out that only 1% of all global business deals go to women, only 1%. And with this uh, knowledge, I started to share during my 10 minute speech, and the women in the room, they get so angry that the chairman uh, had uh, difficulties to, to calm down the, the group, because they said, how can we accept this that we get only 1% of the pie? So it, it uh, creates such a, an anger and you know when people are angry they're gonna look for solutions yeah. and they start trading right away during my speech <laughs> and it was uh, a positive chaotic situation and then everybody uh, I was there for four, four days already and after the speech they came to me to reintroduce themselves I said but we know each other because we are for four days in the in the same hotel already. Yes, but now we're going to reintroduce because we want to really invite you to our countries. Mm -hmm. So this is how it started. And then the same year I went to Aruba and I met 500 business women there for such a small island. So it and did you go on your own or did you take other women with I, you? I went alone first. Yeah. I took one or two women with me because yeah. I wanted to observe first and they invited 500 women. And then I start organizing these missions for the Dutch entrepreneurs. And our first journey was to China, mm -hmm. which was not around the corner. It was in Beijing yeah. with a very big Beijing conference for top women. And from there, I think we have done 14 trade missions so far. Yeah, beautiful. So now I know why it started, because I went on a few of your trade yeah, missions. And what, what I can tell you is that I did, had some brilliant connections. I think I started going three or four years ago, yeah. and I had hardly any international connections. And now I have an international business network for women. So, there you go. And, and, and some of them, and some of the connections I, I met through your trade missions, but what it definitely did to me, although I did business international before, but in a total different arena, it gave me a lot more confidence. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that was the most important thing, uh, I believe. I think that's the most important thing. We should just do it, you know? Yeah. Of course, you know, I'm not scared of meeting other people, because when you go on holiday, you connect with other people. And it's more or less the same, only you are in a business arena. That's the difference. You talk about your business, what are you doing, what are you doing, can we go do something together? We did matchmaking, uh, we select partners. And the most, um, I want to share one example with you from a very successful, there are many successful stories, but one of the ladies that went with us to London in 2016, she was a designer but she worked for the Dutch government and she quit her job and she was 45 years old. Mm. And she said, I'm a designer, so I want to design. And everybody said, you're crazy, you're 45 years old. How can you start up a business now at this age? Keep your management position, you have your salary. And she said, no, 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 because the designs keep coming in my mind and it's going to drive me crazy if I don't do something with it. And then she met uh, people from Elle magazine in London who said, we love your story, can we offer you uh, some advertising space in Elle magazine? And now she's in almost 90 countries. Yeah, she's, she's well She trained. is huge. Yeah. And this happens when you go outside, outside your comfort zone. A lot of beautiful things are happening. So I'm so proud of her. And another lady who went with us on a trade mission to Suriname, she has a business uh, to take care of elderly people mm -hmm. in uh, the northern part of the Netherlands, in Almere. She said, is my business not too small to go on a trade mission? 
I said you're never too small if you want to grow. So she went with us to Suriname. During the matchmaking she met a woman who has the biggest um, home for elderly people there and this woman wanted to uh, go retired yeah, yeah. and she wanted to go with the pension and she didn't have somebody to take over her business. So she took over the business and now she's the biggest one in Suriname with the expertise from the Netherlands and everybody wants to be in her home care. Yeah. So this is another example that trade missions are really worthwhile to, to, to join. Well, it, you know, from my own experience, I, I uh, now have a media partner for my uh, business network, um, and I've met them during one of your. I've met her during one of your trade missions. We we didn't know yet that we were going to work together, mm -hmm. but a year later she saw me and she thought, "Wow, you know, all of a sudden the business has changed yeah. a lot, and wow, she's out everywhere." And then they start decided we want to be your media partner. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, so uh, it's just like L magazine said, <laughs> we want you in our uh, magazine, yeah. and they have two million or more uh, people yeah. who are. Th this is not so such a large is, magazine as L. Next time, next yeah, time exactly. we can try. We can try. <laughs> you never know. And and you know they sponsor and uh, oh, let me, just a second. This is one of the results. Okay. I'll, I'll hand it over to oh, you. Oh, Suprem. I know them. Yeah. I was in their magazine last year. Yeah, oh, it matches with my clothes. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's a result of one of the connections oh, wow. I did. Uh, f f uh, I got to know over, over there at a trade mission. So let's wow. continue our interview. You can wow. have a look later. I, okay, because I'm excited <laughs> already. Yeah, I could see. Yeah. <laughs> so. If anybody of those women who are watching us now th think, yes, that's really something I would like to do, and I can highly encourage you, by the way, to do a uh, go on a trade mission, where do they need to start? First, they need to apply on our website, because we publish all the trade missions on our homepage. So if people want to apply, and we are busy to translate the homepage in English. But is this, only for, is this only for people in Holland, or is no, this for this everybody is, in the world? This is for everybody in the world, yeah. but on our website you find all the information. Mm -hmm. And of course uh, we can share other websites with them as well. Mm -hmm. But for the Netherlands they can join us, and we can also help other people from other countries who want to join. We can to book them in as well. It's okay. no problem, it's no problem. All right, good. Yeah. Only there is a special arrangement for the Dutch people. There is a special arrangement with the Dutch government yeah. for Dutch, yeah. uh, Dutch based companies, but um, we can help them anyway okay, because good. we are inviting people from China, Hong Kong, Dutch Caribbean, anyway, and uh, we also have people from Gambia and Ghana. So if they want us to arrange it for them, we can do it. Okay, so, so now you need to tell them where. Yeah, <laughs> they have to go to womennetherlands.com. And at this moment we are busy translating the website, so I think about one week you will have the English version. But now it's only the Dutch version there. But if you wait a few days, a few more days, then but by, we have by the time the interview is uh, is online, by the it time will probably it, yeah, be uh, it will be online as well. Okay, good. So, is there anything else you would like to add to this interview? Anything else you would like to share of your tremendous international um, and the experience? Next, yeah, we, the, 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 coming, uh, the upcoming trade missions are uh, the end of June, 24th or 28th of June. We have the Wind Trade Week London with the, the Wind Trade Awards. And I invite everybody to nominate women who are Me. doing extremely well, I will nominate you, don't worry, don't you worry, you're doing very well, we waited for you to grow first, yeah, of course. and now we will nominate you, no, no problem, and we wanted uh, to nominate, encourage you to nominate women who are doing very well in their business, and to join us there, because this is something over 20 countries will be present there, and uh, we will have another trade mission to Brussels, Oh, which good. will be uh, 25 till 28th of uh, September. Which is in Belgium, by it's the way. It's in Belgium. Yeah. And Belgium is, of course, the headquarters. Brussels is the headquarters of the European Union. So if you go to Brussels, you will also meet a lot of people who are based there. So that's why we uh, choose Brussels for the second time to go there, because our members also want to get the connections with the European Union. 
and the fonts of the European Union, which are more great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is what I want to share, and I want to congratulate all women with uh, with uh, International Women's Day, of course. Yeah. Uh, what we are celebrating today. Um, we celebrated a little bit, but we know, we are aware that there is a lot of work that needs to be done because we are really lacking after men. We really should increase our positions in companies, in executives and non-executive boards. Growing our businesses. Growing our businesses, increase your revenues. Yeah. So we should help each other, support each other and work together because it's not only the big companies that get all the deals but if a few SMEs join together they also can get big contracts from the government and from the corporates so let's start working on that well thank you so much Carmen I really feel you have shared a lot of your knowledge and I do understand why you have so much to offer yeah. Um, if you want to get in touch with Carmen, you know, at the end of the video there will be a little ad with all her details with the website, so you can look it up and you can connect with her on LinkedIn or wherever you like. Rest me to say thank you so much for your attention. I hope you learned a lot again and I'll see you next week. Bye bye! Okay, bye, -bye.